Okay, so let's try this example A. It says unknown sample of hydrocarbon with only one oxygen, CxHyO. Um, so I guess the first thing that these questions are oftentimes ask is where are those two main peaks, the base peak and the parent ion? So let's go ahead and ask those particular questions. Where's the parent ion? 134. 134. How do you know it's that one and not any of the peaks, the other peaks? Yeah, so the highest mass, okay? Oftentimes there's a tiny little peak right after 134 or right after this uh, parent ion. That's the M plus plus one peak. Don't worry about it, okay? That's because every once in a while there's a carbon 13 one of the molecules that it's looking at. The other thing we notice here, that the molecular formula they give us, or at least part of it, C, H, and O, right? If we have only atoms that are C, H, and O, the compound has to have a what type of mass? Even. An even number of mass, right? It's only gonna have an odd number <clears throat> if uh, it has a nitrogen in it. So that gives you another clue as to, oh yeah, that's the parent line. Okay. In fact, if I look at all the other ones, they're all off, right? So you can logically think this stuff out, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go through some of these peaks. Um, oh, where's the base peak? 91. 91. How do you know that's the base peak? Tallest, biggest, whatever you want to say. Okay. And 91, is that a common ion that we usually see or oftentimes see in these yes. things? Yes. Yes. Yeah, what ion is it? Okay, it's a benzyl group that does what? Rearranges, yes. I know we want to say it's a benzyl group, but it's actually a what ion? Billium ion, yes. that thing. So, like you said, it came from a benzyl group though, right? So we know that we must have a benzyl group in this molecule. That gives us a clue, the structural information, structural clue to this molecule. <clears throat> Here's another clue to what's in this molecule. When I look at this peak here, right, I can tell what it probably is by looking at the difference there, right? So what's the difference between 134 and 119? 15. 15, so we subtracted 15 from that to get 119. What's a common group that you guys know that's 15? Look at your common groups. Methyl. methyl group, right? So we think, okay, there must be a methyl group in here. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then the other thing we can, well, we need to know what its molecular formula is, right? So 134, and we know there's only one oxygen in there, yeah. so we can already subtract 16, right? Okay, so 134 minus 16, and that's going to give us 118. Okay, and then from there we should be able to decide how many carbons and hydrogens there are, right? Yes. So how do we go about doing that? We take 118 and divide it by what? 12. 12. And that gives me 9.8. So does that mean I have 9.8 carbons in this thing? No. No, nah, that doesn't even make sense, right? Yeah. So what would be a good number to start with? Nine maybe, right? So we'll say nine times 12. That equals 108. Yes. 
And then that would mean we have 10, ten hydrogens, hydrogens, right? 10 hydrogens. Okay, does that seem reasonable? Yes. Yeah, that seems kind of reasonable, right? Yes. So. C nine H ten. Is that what we said? Okay, so let's see how many units of unsaturation this is going to have. Okay, so it should be what? C N H two N plus two. So that's C nine H twenty. So how many units? So if we take C9H20, subtract C9H10, we get H10. So how many units? Five. Five units. We know it's already got a what in it? A benzene ring, right? A benzene or benzyl group, which contains a benzene ring in it, right? So how many units of unsaturation does that benzene ring already have it? Three plus one because it's yeah, a ring, it's a so it's four, right? So we're only missing the one unit of unsaturation. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so this 43 here, uh oh. Come back on. Okay, this 43 here. That's a common ion we've been seeing as well, right? The acelium ion. You guys remember that from the table? Okay. Yes. So the acelium ion is that thing there. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, that comes from having the methyl carbonyl. Okay, so that was derived from something like this. Okay, in fact, those are just resonance structures of each other. Okay. And then this one what did we say? It came from the benzyl group, right? Like that, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we put those two fragments together, and guess what? Guess, guys. Take a guess. You're gonna guess? What do we get? The molecule? That's the molecule. Okay. 